what is it? The time to eat, drink and be merry and spend lots of time with your family. So it's probably no coincidence that January is the busiest time of year for relationship counsellors. Some even call the first week of the new year Divorce Week. That sounds a bit dreary, doesn't it? Well, Ayesha Vardag is a divorce lawyer, joins us now. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, is this true? Is it always a busy time for people like you? It is a busy time. A recent survey said that January the 7th is actually the big day for people deciding to kick off their divorce proceedings. Um, it's a tremendous, Christmas is a tremendously high pressure time for families, not only because, as you say, they're all forced together and forced together with the extended family, who maybe they're not that close to and, and spend the rest of the year avoiding. They're charging up and down the country, getting from one house to another. They're entertaining in this lavish way when they've probably all come back from busy working times, financial pressure, expectations about presents. And there's also this sense that Christmas is the sort of barometer for how your life is going, how your family is going. So if it doesn't go well, if people aren't happy, um, there's this uh, terrible sort of disappointment and sense not, of not, not meeting happy. expectations. If you're not yeah. happy at Christmas, you're not going to be happy That's anytime. That's right. And then this sense of New Year, fresh start, got to kind of, you know, if it's all going wrong then, you start a fresh slate in the New Year and that's why it all kicks off. Plus people are depressed in January anyway, so, oh <laughs> so we all get terribly busy. To this business about sitting round, you know, you're sitting round in front of the right. telly, perhaps YouTube now with the Queen. Well, that's right. But you're, 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 you're much more confined. You're sort mm. of getting, getting to know the people in your family a lot more than you normally do. Um, also, I, I sometimes wonder whether people look at their partners, then they look at the mother or the father and think, you know, he or she's going to turn into that. I don't like the look of that. <laughs> Could there be something in that as well? That is a grisly thought. Goodness, that may be a big part of it. Yes, forcing all the generations together and getting well, cabin fever. I mean, obviously, being a divorce lawyer, that's mm. your business, but is there some sort of, sort of sensible advice that you'd give people? I mean, to take life a little bit, uh, bit steadier, think about the long term. What is it? If people come to you and they say, oh, I can't stand it anymore, do you say, well, hang on a minute, have you thought about just that? The other. Yes, I mean, we certainly do that. But there are two points there. I think in relation to Christmas itself, people should give themselves a break, and maybe it's not fantastic, and one has to look at the other moments in the year, because Christmas is a very artificial thing. Um, in terms of people coming to me and saying they want to divorce, we, we actually have a duty as lawyers, and something which, you know, which, which one feels personally anyway, to try to get people to take a, a cool view and settle down and really look at whether there's a real problem or whether it's something that's just blown up and will just go away. And when, when there's scope for working things out, then we recommend counselling and we refer people on for that. But sometimes Christmas and the stress, it's just the catalyst for real deep problems that need to be addressed somehow. Ayesha Vadek, thank you very much indeed. Now then, uh, a lot of the country, particularly